Pikachu, what the hell? In 1998, two legends called Masahiro Sakurai and Satoru Iwata were working on a fighting game called Dragon Key. It was at this point Sakurai hit a smashing idea of merging different characters from Nintendo franchises in an all-out battle for carnage and mayhem. And thus, Smash Brothers was born. Let's go. Super Smash Brothers is a crossover fighting game that's developed by HAL Laboratory and published by Nintendo and was released for the N64 on the 21st of January 1999. This will be the first installment for the series. The game features many characters from the Mario, Zelda, Star Fox and Pokemon universe competing in a tournament, punching, kicking and using items and combos at their disposal until the fight is over. Featuring 12 playable Nintendo characters with their respective moves and combos, 9 custom stages for Carnage, 2 to 4 player battle and a single player campaign. The game became a commercial success, selling a whopping 2.93 million units worldwide by 2001, and has since led to many sequels such as Melee, Brawl, and Smash Brothers Ultimate. Let's check it out. Got the game's mode select, got you some one player versus option and data. Check out the one player. We'll check out training first. Character select screen. Yeah, wow. Who would have thought this would eventually turn into this? Bloody crazy. Got yourself a whole bunch of characters to choose from. A few unlockables such as Ness, Luigi, Captain Falcon and Jigglypuff. These are basically reused assets or character models with some changes. We'll just go with Pikachu. Now you got yourself a whole bunch of levels here based on Nintendo's franchises. Congo Jungle, Yoshi's Island, Hyrule Castle. We'll check out Hyrule Castle. Now, don't be fooled, this is still a traditional side-scrolling fighting game with fully rendered 3D assets, level design, character animations and models. The movement is still the 2D side-scrolling we know in other games such as Mortal Kombat and Killer Instinct. Obviously, this being the N64 with a lot more horsepower than the 4th generation consoles, to increase things like camera angles, level lengths, effects, and much more detailed character design and movement. Yeah, this is one dope fighting game, eh? We used to get home from school, spend at least three or four hours playing this. So much fun. You've also got yourself a bunch of items to use. Don't know if you've seen earlier, we had Pokeballs, Hammers, Fire Flower. It's crazy. This hammer is pretty fun, eh? <laughs> Alright, we'll check out one play mode. Your objective is to basically knock your opponents off screen. The way this game works is you have a damage counter that's measured in a percentage, and the goal is to inflict as much damage to the other characters, and the more hits they take, the more vulnerable and weaker they become. It's a bit different than your average health bar, and works really well. Good design. Now all the characters have combo combination schemes with animations fixed to the character's theme and different damage effects, such as Pikachu with his thunder and say Jigglypuff and a stupid lullaby. Stage 3, taking on Fox, and you'll find that a single player campaign can be beaten in under 45 minutes. It does have some replay value I guess, for unlockable characters and levels, but yeah it's a bit lacklusting. But this game is about multiplayer, so... Level designs, they're pretty basic, but visually pretty appealing eh, like, these look decent. Some of the items that you do pick up, the animations are 2D, like the explosions, shield bubbles and whatnot. But still, pretty solid, eh? Get out of here, man. Bonus stage. This is pretty basic, gonna go around and break the targets. The time limit. The faster you do it, the more points you get.
I don't really like these modes. A little bit of puzzle solving, I guess. Nah, yeah, whatever. I tell you what, this has got to be one of the fastest loading N64 games out there, eh? Like, you can literally fire the console up and in under five seconds, you're in a match fighting. Pretty crazy. Yeah, man, this is so much fun. Link's got to be one of my favorite characters, eh? He's got his hook shot, his bombs, and a boomerang, I believe? Yeah, not 100% sure. We're smashing it, eh? Oh. oh, what? Now, you actually can't change characters while you're in the campaign itself. I've actually been restarting the game every time, just to show you guys the characters' animations and abilities. Bit of a pain in the ass, but it's worth it. Kirby's pretty cool, he sucks them up and mimics their attacks. You see he turned into Pikachu, do electric shock now. Brilliant. Ugh. What the hell? Oh! Alright, in this mode, the three on one, we're gonna take on Giant Dickhead over here. He's pretty OP, eh? He takes some damage, I'll tell you that. You gotta beat the crap out of him. Oh. Alright, one character down. So this guy sucks. I tell you what, this level's pretty cool though. Congo Jungle, got the Donkey Kong theme music going. Brilliant. Come on, you big ape. Yes! Uh, we skipped a couple of levels, we're up to Metal Mario. Again, this character is pretty OP. Takes some damage. Bit of grinding. Now you can't actually play as Metal Mario. That's just a reskin of the original Mario character in the game. Too easy. What the hell is this? Some random hand. Okay. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, why would the developers use some random hand as an end boss? Well, all these characters in the game, they're basically a bunch of toys. They're not actually real Nintendo characters fighting. It's basically an excuse to give the game a G rating for kids. You know, keep it user friendly. Oh! This level's pretty cool though. Reminds me of Star Fox a bit. Same with the music. Gets you pretty pumped up. There we go. And the game's end credits. Overall, this is one pretty solid game, especially for a first installment. I had played a bit of Melee and a bit of Ultimate, but to be honest, this game just has so much nostalgia and I'll always go back and play it. Fantastic.